totally break and jump up on your chair if you get one or the other. Who's got the dasses? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hey guys, before we get this started, I just want to give a huge shout out to Moxfield. This trip and this video would not be possible without them. It is the best deck building website on the entire internet. I say this with zero hyperbole. It's got all the coolest decks, all the best brewers are on there. It's got all the best features. It's incredible. The support that they offer through their Discord and through Twitter is unparalleled and it's free. Go make an account, give us a follow, support their Patreon. Thank you to Moxfield for helping us fill this void in content and coverage and getting us in there as eyes on the ground. Thank you again, and let's get on the road. We're on the way. Got pops in the car. Heading to the train station. The doors will open on both sides of the train. For elevator service, please exit the left. That's where I'm gonna meet Veggie. So, heading to my car ride. We're waiting for Veggie Wagon. We'll see. We'll see when Veggie gets here. I wanna do a lot of high fiving with him, I think. <laughs> We got Veggie here. We're gonna be best friends, buddy. If we weren't best friends before this, oh we'll be best friends by the end of today. I'm so ready for this. Oh, it's spicy sausage. Today. We've all seen this movie. Uh, Alan, Alan and Veggie on the road. Uh, we're, we're a ways into mass here, and uh, <laughs> there's like literal pieces flying off of this truck hitting the window right now. Uh, pieces of wood flying off of it, so, so we're gonna try to go around it. Feels feels good though. Me and Veggie in the car, in the Veggie wagon. Veggie's car has no AC, so um, we've just got like air blowing on us. But yeah, you, you can hit the Patreon at no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, we got a little Christmas tree farm out there. It's it's pretty out here for sure. It's been nonstop greenery. So on the road, we passed the final destination truck. We made it through. So, gotta love that. I think a bit of backstory about the event really helps at this point. This is the third year that Commander Sealed has happened. The first year was very small. The second year, they had about 50-something people. And this year, they've gotten four times that. They topped out in the 250s, which is absolutely incredible. They raised over $14,000 overall. But the way the event works, you make a sealed Commander deck. It was two packs of Commander Legends two packs of Commander Legends 2, a pack each of Modern Horizons 1 and 2, a Mystery Booster, and a Double Feature, and then one pack was either Time Spiral or Double Master, and then there were eight more packs randomly chosen from packs released from about War of the Spark on. So there was a really big pool to be able to choose from. The best part was that cards that would normally be banned in Commander, like your Emrakuls or Channels and that sort of stuff, were actually not banned in this format. So you could play with whatever you want, as well as the test print cards from the Mystery Boosters. So you saw a lot of really wild stuff out there. And I think that's the biggest draw to this event, was the unknown factor and really appealed to the brewer in everything. Everybody. Anyway, let's get back on the road. We made it. We're here at the, the Mohawk Valley Welcome Center because I have to go pee pee. There's like a whole landscape thing with the playground and a bridge and a boat. We're gonna go, we're gonna do a little bit of sightseeing while we're here. I'm gonna go over to that bridge and it's it's like there's a whole there's a whole there's a whole thing here. There's a there's a lot going on here. There's a lot to see. So we're gonna we're gonna do some exploring. And you can pee wherever you want. Yeah, I'm gonna pee everywhere. That's why I stopped. Do not climb over or under the fence. Neither over nor under. There's a boat over there on the end, near the entrance. There was a boat. Uh, so this train is long too. Long train. This is probably uh, Saffron Olive showing up in his trailer. <laughs> <laughs> we just got off the exit. We're finally off 90. We're, we're 12 minutes away. Woo! We're so close. I can smell it. I can smell it. It turns out the smell was veggie all along. We made it to the Airbnb. 
and this is the haunted attic. So this is, yeah. we're not going to show the rest of the Airbnb, just these wall stains. And oh, clearly haunted this attic. Is clearly haunted. I think it's the, the garbage plate is the junkyard plate. We'll find out. And we got pictures of dogs all over the inside of this spot. So we got the whole spot lined with dogs. This thing is absolutely gnarly. Came with bread. It's unclear how to apply the bread. Uh, but boy, it's good. I'm, I'm tucking in and I'm I'm gonna run out of steam before I get through this one. It's this is all right, we're out here at the thing. I'm chilling with the bullies, Buff Town bullies, and man, chilling. We got like three out of eight of them or something like that. We got, we got good people all though, for sure. We got a spicy pod right now, too. Can we move this in here? Can we see them all? We got, there you go. We got Dalsum. We got, we got Timna Kamal. We got Korvald. And we got Timna Tana. So it's going to be spicy. This party was such a blast to be able to attend and such a great icebreaker. Huge props to Gunner and his workplace for being able to put this on and creating an environment for people to kind of celebrate before the event. We left the party. Um, three, three of the people in our Airbnb got a an Uber home, but I am getting a ride home with none other than the man himself, Charles. And Charles, as the mono white guy, is wearing all white and has a small white car. We are in it. We'll have to show it from the outside. It's the most Charles thing ever. <laughs> it's very. It's uh, Charles. Charles is smiling and being being very humble, but Charles has a fucking cool car. It is. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> all right. So we're pulling up at the event. The destination is all uh, right. I learned this morning that the hairspray I got was a mousse and not a hairspray, but I think things are okay. The venue is this weird mall that's converted. It's it's a, an old factory that's converted into a mall. Um, it's a really cool space. There's small shops everywhere. Uh, it is like a f***ing crazy ass maze. Uh, but we did find how to get up there. It's from these crazy old factory staircases. This is it. It's a very cool space. It's loud in here already. You can hear it. But the squad's in here. It's, this place is filled with people. It's looking f***ing dope. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of space. People are sitting a fair ways apart. And there's the registration line, so I'm gonna go get on that. The layout of the space itself was great. There was a ton of open air and lots of room for everybody, like I mentioned. And as you got online to register, you got to pass all of the vendors and all of the artists, as well as supply booth. They were giving out free water. And then once you got your badge and your name tag, you would continue all the way across to register with the judges on a separate line. So the line moved really, really quickly. Everybody was extremely helpful and happy to be there. I was so psyched to see how fast the line moved. Tell me a little bit about the event structure, if you will. So we are going to be doing about one hour of uh, build time and trading. We're going to divide each table up into basically pods of two. So each table is a pod, and two pods will be able to trade with each other after they open their 17 packs. And from that, they're going to build a full-on commander deck out of whatever they open and trade for. And then we'll be playing three rounds of Swiss with a cut to top four. What are you guys using to generate the rounds? Are you using any sort of software? Are you using Squirebot? Or what's, uh, what's working with that? So we've elected not to go with Squirebot. Uh, one of my floor judges, Eric, wrote a great program for, specifically for this event that'll do pairing, scorekeeping, the whole nine. Oh, awesome. So you got the custom, uh, the custom thing. I like, I like to hear that. Are there any issues you could see coming up? Anything that you are on the lookout for? Uh, the biggest things I'm on the lookout for is basically stuff that any head judge on the lookout for is bad stuff TM. It's been incredible seeing the response to this project. Like, I think over, I've said it over and over again. The fact that people have, like, jumped on this event over and over again has been absolutely incredible. So thank you again, Graydon, for the work you put in. Well, thank you for uh, coming out and supporting this. Like, without the players, without a supporting base, there's nothing going on here. So Absolutely. Such a great turnout. Really, really gets me pumped up and excited for this. So it is hypothetically possible <laughs> in this seal pool, because both Theros and Strixhaven are in the seal pool, to pull a Thassa's Oracle and Tainted Pact. I think we're getting there, all right? Somebody's going to totally break and jump up on your chair if you get one or the other. Who's got the Thassa's yeah, Oracle? Yeah, absolutely. I'm currently having a hard time like getting my hair 
and the mic in the shot without fully extending my hand. I wish there was a way to do a wider view, but those are just personal problems. The energy before the games actually started was just massive. People who had been there last year kind of knew what was going on and what to expect, but everybody whose first time it was, was so, you could just feel the electricity about how excited they were to do something that was so outside of the normal for Commander games. Do you have any strategies? Uh, I've played Sealed before. I've played okay. Commander before. So I figure this can't be that different, right? You just mash them together. A lot of the people I've talked to is like, my other favorite format is Sealed. So yeah. I think there is a lot of crossover for this. Are there any particular Commanders that you're looking for out of the Sealed packs? I really would like to open a five color Commander. I don't really care which one, but I'll, I'll take any five color Commanders when I play all my good stuff. That's also another thing I'm hearing from, like, everybody wants that five color because it opens up the possibility of that whole pool. Although, they have this trading thing, which is pretty intriguing. That's probably the most interesting part. So I think if I have a strategy, it's to, like, find my two or three good colors and then trade everything else to get more cards in my color. Literally going to be taking any colors I'm not in and taking that stack and saying, hey, I'm in green, you're in blue, I will trade you all this blue for all that green. Yeah, I think that's the way to go, yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Have you been to the other ones that they've done? This is the first time I've been, no, uh, we had the like COVID stuff going on. Right, so yeah, the whole on, thing, so yeah. yeah. This, is, this is the first one I made it to, but I'm super hyped for it, there's a ton of people here. I think we had, what, like four times as many people, seats as last year, and it's sold out so it went from a 64 person event to like a 250 something person event which is so awesome for a charity event yeah oh that's that's exactly what you want we sat down on table table 34 seat three and i sit down and look who comes over but f***ing Dio from the Bullet the Buff Town Bullies over here. So we're sitting right next to each other, separate pods, but same table. So there you go. Off to, off to it. One more time. Seatmates. Chilling with buddies. We're down a person on the sealed pod, so I'm really worried about not having optimal trades. So hopefully that's something. Ho hopefully uh, seat two shows up. Uh, otherwise. Things are gonna get a little narrow over here. We'll see though. We got there. We got our fourth. We got a fourth player in our pod, in our in our in our sealed pool. So we made it. We got a fourth person. So we got the full trade pool. I'm stoked right now. So, introductions. My name is Brent. I will be your head judge for today. I'm assisted by a great judge staff. I have Lauren. packs, and once we get all the packs handed out, then we'll come around and do a little bit of stickers to remember the event. Again, any questions, comments, or concerns, raise your hand, call the judge, and I'll tell you later on. As soon as you have your packs, you start opening and trading. Opening and trading! Guess who knows who wants the card? <laughs> Clowns really sit next to each other. Yeah, Hi, really, how are you? Good. Good. Probably don't know how to sign up. Right <laughs> <now>. yeah. <laughs> this is the spikiest table yeah. of all time. Yo, you want to see some spice? That's like, oh snap, that's an infinite combo. Oh snap, <laughs> that's also an infinite combo. Oh snap, that's an infinite combo. This was the moment that everybody was most excited for cracking these packs. I had spent the entire morning interviewing people about what their strategies were, what their deck building strategies were, what cards they were hoping for, what their trading strategies were, which is unheard of. The fact that you get to break these packs open and trade with the people at your table was such a wild concept and something that everybody was 
had ideas about how it would go moving into it. And once you start cracking those packs, it's all out the window. I started breaking these and just looking for something that was maybe in like three colors that had a strategy I kind of like. I ended up building Ball, Lord of Murder, which is a legendary god from Commander Legends Baldur's Gate. And it's a 4-4 in black, green, red. So we're jundin' them out right now. And its face matched my playmat, which is super important. Aesthetics are everything. It's a 4-4 legendary creature god. It says as long as your life total is less than or equal to half of your starting life total, Ball Lord of Murder has Indestructible. Which is an interesting concession to the indestructibility of the old gods or what they tried to do with the Amonkhet gods. I don't feel like it functions quite as well, but his second ability, whenever another non-token creature you control dies, put a 1-1 counter on target creature and goad it. And I was able to use this ability to great effect throughout the game. I didn't have a consistent recursion engine, so I wasn't able to do it constantly and like maybe grow my own creatures or goad every creature, but I was able to do it consistently about once a turn because I had cool things that would generate tokens and it worked really well. So it was a really good strategy as far as keeping other players off of my back while I was trying to build a board state. There were a lot of very strong creatures out there, but it didn't end up really popping off until my third match. Uh, Warren, Eric, or Steven's we do have a right to I am your head judge. Round two, starting now. Uh, we got... Bullshit. We got, yeah, bullshit. bullshit. We got double Animar in the pod. So these, these two f***ing jokers, we got double Animar. So this is... This is going to be, a, we got Astral Flame and Seth Cross as well, so we got, and uh, Joe, yeah? Joe, it's absolutely a pleasure. I'm looking forward to this spot. Take it away, man, whenever you're ready. I'm keeping my seven. I'll let you know how it goes. Oh my god, all right. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is, this is the third time this motherfucker has green suns. Where, where's the stupid green sun? We, we on green suns. Right there. Green Suns. This is the third time he's Green Suns. Grab a bigger. Four bigger. And I've blown that motherfucker up twice now. This is the third time. I told him I'd throw him over the edge of this shit if he did it again. And he did it again. Oh my god. Alright. Oh my god. <laughs> That's the end of me. Dead to Miram. Miram. Miram murdered my ass for for eight exaxes, big dead. We're 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 completing initiative dungeons here. We're green sunsing for vigor three times. We're we're getting murdered by exaxes. This game is wild. The monarch and initiative got switched around literally every fucking turn. This has been amazing. I need to rally right now. We're going for the chimichanga. I saw a chimney on the menu and I was in. Let's go. Round three. We're on round three right now. And uh, what do we got for commanders? We're looking at Jan Jansen. We got Anje and oh, all right. We got some. We got some good commanders. This should be a good one. I'm pumped about this game. Dean, this is your event. First of all, I want to say with the absolute hubris and speak for every single person here, thank you so much you. for putting on this event, yeah. and thank you for putting on an event that is just like so focused on the community and on charity and on all that stuff. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thank everybody for coming. I really appreciate it. Thank you everybody who donated. If you didn't come and you donated, thank you. It's, yeah. Where did the idea for this come from? This came from a uh, desire to do a limited commander format before we had Commander Legends. So my friends and I kicked around some ideas. We didn't think we could actually draft enough packs for Commander Legends just because, it, or for Commander, because it would take so long. So sealed and then trade. It's a compromise. So that has always been the format, has been sealed and then trade? Yes, since 2019. In the last few years, there were less packs, is that correct? Uh, last year was 17, I think year one was 16 packs, yes. Okay, and obviously you, we've got four times the turnout as we did uh, last year, <laughs> and the year before that was like you guys did it in a small game shop. Yes. What other takeaways are there from this year? I think the number one takeaway is that we can go bigger next year and we can raise more money for our charities again. So Awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing it. The 30-second tournament report, where's your head at? 
I don't know. I'm just overwhelmed. It's been a crazy day, and I'm so grateful to everybody who came. I'm I'm really humbled by the turnout, and I'm I'm so proud that we were able to raise the amount of money that we were for Trevor. It's really all about that for me. So um, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. How big was your team that helped with this event? We had a lot of people who did invisible things. It was probably a lot bigger than the like the 15 ish people that I know of. Um, we had a lot of volunteers. It was a group effort. Thank you so much and congratulations on such an awesome event. This thank is you. really, really beautiful. So thank you so much. Thank you. Absolutely. Hope to see you here next year. Here with Moxfield uh, talking to top four finalist Elizabeth. Uh, Liz. How was your experience today? Uh, pretty good. I did this last year and it was really fun. So I'm happy to be back this year and just being able to you know that I like the trading element of the, the build but it was really fun to just scramble a deck together and yeah. What did you play? I played um, the Master Chef background with Sark Volk Deathbringer. Your games you just you swept was it? Were they hard fought or were they like was it easy claps? Uh, it got harder as as we went along. Liz, thank you so much yeah. for taking a few minutes. Yep, thank you for uh, having me on your yeah. show. Anthony, how was your day today? It's been great. This is my first time coming to this event. Uh, honestly, so much fun to do. It's a great cause, great people. Everyone was just like, so excited to be hanging out and just such a fun thing to do. I've never done Commander Sealed like this. Now, did you go into the Sealed experience with a strategy? Were you going to like, I'm going to look for this card or this commander or trade in X ways? Did you have any sort of a strategy going into it? So I actually spoke to some friends. We came up with a bunch of strategies like, oh, what if you like force one color, do one thing? None of that actually worked. We have an <laughs> hour to build a deck and trade. I'm just going to make what I can and go from there. Uh, I did Abomination of Lanawar. Were you able to trade with your pod to get like enough elves to make that thing pop off? So it's for the colors. I'm not actually full. Oh. Focus. I had a terrible pool for the actual legendary creatures and I just had to get anything I could for Golgari colors. So there are some elf synergies. I have killed one person with commander damage. For the most part though, it's just kind of like a three mana, maybe three, three. So. Okay. All right. Hey, listen, that's no slouch though. Were the games like just easy easy peasy wrap them up clap cheeks or were they like hard fall you went to like tooth I and nail all the time there's <laughs> at least one instance it came down to one life another instance where a random attack and like a chump block at the end turned out that they had a uh, ember cleave in hand and almost killed me listen i'm just happy i made it this far yeah i win great if not i came out here to have a good time hang out with friends and it's a great time well congratulations on making top four i'm going to stick around i'm going to watch this match and i'm going to uh we'll we'll see what happens afterwards but thank you so much for taking a few minutes anthony of course thank you very much have a good one all right chris you are in the top four yes what are you playing uh, i have a uh, jet mirror jet mirror i got absolutely clapped up by a jet mirror deck earlier today do you have any strategies going into it or is it just play creatures and punch yeah, you on yeah, turn 10 just over the best it's <laughs> the havoc festival has been my friend today it's oh yeah when the games went to time the next player would get a havoc festival emblem that means everybody loses half their life during their upkeep so there were a lot of players who were relying on that havoc festival emblem to win them the game and just be at a higher life total everybody gets chopped and you take home the dubs all right that's awesome to hear uh, havoc festival gymnastics well it looks like the judges are coming over to give you guys the lowdown so i'm going to step away thank you so much chris right. yeah take it easy we're here with uh moxfield and top four finalist i've got venom is that the name my name's Mike, but um, I'm a level two judge in the area. I've been in the community for over 20 years, so everybody knows me as Venom. Okay. All right. And, you know, Mike. Yeah. How was your experience this weekend? Uh, it was a ton of fun. There was a lot of different decks that I saw built. The trading was really fun because you got to really customize your deck. And everybody I played against was awesome. It was... Yep something where even as people were trying to figure out what they were doing everybody's really like just working together moving the game along finding things to do so have you played in this event before i did play last year and okay. i judged the year before thank you so much mike i really really appreciate you taking a few minutes mm, you're welcome so this is the final pod right now <laughs> these guys are creatures, it's, it seems time. like it's not that crazy okay, my man over here is like, unsaved yeah, with no play now like an absolute uh, beast yeah. Uh, we got some elves doing crazy shit. Jet Mirror's out there Man, holding it down. Shoot. I was at 37. And Infinite uh, fully representing here in the middle. No, that's not. You went two. Taking the more is going to point for me. Infinite everywhere. He's shooting on the six. There is a priority Avenger in the final pod, folks. This is not a joke. I love it. I love it. There is a priority Avenger in the final pod.
and we're going to go talk to the winner in just a second. You can see the whole place is empty. All the tables and chairs are stacked up. Everybody went home. It's bedtime for Bonzo. We've got the winner right behind us with a big stack of cool ass stuff. Looks like a bunch of new commander, new Capenna commander decks. We got some, uh, we got some cool stuff. So we are here with Moxfield and our grand prize, top four, big number one winner, Anthony. Congratulations, first of all. Thank you. It, I'm honestly in shock. I mostly play like pre-releases and casual EDH with friends, so it feels good. <laughs> honestly, like pre-releases is that's your that's your curve for doing this, right? Playing a sealed pool in a pre-release, like what did you play today? You played sealed, right? I mean, it's sealed in Commander, so I played to my strengths, I guess. And it yep. worked out. <laughs> well, congratulations. We talked a little bit about your strategies. How was that game? It ended up going really well. Um, I managed to have kind of a snowballing board state where I had Imperius Perfect so I could make more elves that just kept on making my commander bigger and just gumming up the board. I had drain effects so when creatures died everyone would take damage, no one wanted to even like, have me chump with creatures. And then I had an all-star, I forget what the color it's called, it's an ooze that makes oozes at my end step who have power and toughness equal to uh, types of cards in my graveyard. Were you worried at any point throughout that last game? Did you feel like, I saw early on uh, the fellow playing Jet Mirror had like an explosive lead. Yeah, definitely worried. My start was fine, but not explosive. Like some people who had 4-4 angels flying through the air with Jet Mirror, Vigilance. It was a hard one. Um, but I always had just enough like removal and tricks that I felt okay even if I became the focus. And with just like politicking, we managed to kind of like shove some of the focus in other places as well, which was nice. As far as your strategies, as far as going into this, is there anything that knowing about it now you would do differently? Honestly, I don't think so. The only thing I would have done was planned where I was going for lunch so I wasn't running around in the short period. Yo, big big facts. I was very, very lucky. I went down the stairs and across the courtyard and I ate a big chimichanga for lunch oh, and it good. put me into just, it put me into suspend. Definitely took like four or five turns to, to come back from that one. But um, yeah, congratulations. It's absolutely a pleasure to see your rise throughout this, to see you, uh, to see you take this pod. I, uh, I know you, uh, you played with one of the people I came up here with, Ian, and he was definitely like, he was like, oh, so close, so close. So you, uh, you, I'm really glad to see you take it, and I'm sure he'll be happy to see it as well. Um, what, what do you got here? What are we, what are we looking at? We have an incredible spread. They were far too generous with prizes, if anything. Uh, we have a whole horde of different booster packs, Modern Horizons, Double Features, Throne of Eldraine, uh, Dungeons and Dragons. We got just an excellent spread. We got all the cool stuff. It looks like a big stack. Uh, we got a... Uh, we got a whole bunch of commander decks, all five families, right? All five from New Capenna, each one, and then Secret Lair Ultimate Edition, uh, Hidden Pathways, which they actually gave one of these to all of the top four finishers. That's really, really generous. That's very cool to see. Well, I want to say again, congratulations on uh, winning the Commander Sealed 2022 tournament. Congratulations from everybody, from myself. I'm speaking for everybody. Congratulations <laughs> from everybody from Moxfield. And uh, yeah, this was absolutely awesome to see. Yeah, the only thing I can say is if you're watching, 100% come next year. This was credible, great people, great cause, good event. Just That's the sentiment that I saw echoed over and over again is, yo, get, get your ass to Mars, you know, like get up here, be in this event. It's an experience unlike any other, and hopefully it takes off. Hopefully we see more than one of these fire off a year, but even if we don't, if this is the only one, I think it's going to get a lot, a lot of coverage, a lot of heat, because this was an absolute blast. So, uh, yeah, congratulations, and thank you again. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. My pleasure. All right, guys, we're at the bedtime hour right now. This is Alan with Moxfield signing off. I want to say thank you to everybody who watched this video. If you liked it at all, please let me know in the comments what you want to see for the next one when I'm at Magic 30. Let me know. Thank you to our sponsors, Moxfield, for getting me out here in person to this event. Thank you to Just Games and Gunner and Dean for putting on this amazing event. And to the judges who worked tirelessly, everybody who broke down those tables at the end of the day, and everybody who got a game in with me or even talked to me at all. Thank you guys so much. Thank you again to Moxfield, our sponsors, for letting me do this. I'll see you at the next one.
It is hot as balls out here. 